So this is a tough love video, judging from the title, closed mouths, don't get fed, lazy hands, don't count bread, okay? We're going to get into it, but first, hey friend, welcome to my channel, Cream Elude Mental Gems. This channel is dedicated to leveling up in all areas of your life. So let us learn together, read together, but most importantly, grow together. Now, without further ado, let's get into this video. Let's talk about it. On this channel, I'm always talking about laziness, not expecting anything to be handed to you. One thing as a former people pleaser that I learned was that my mouth is to be closed a lot when I needed help with something or I wanted a certain opportunity. I wouldn't go for it as aggressively as I should. I wouldn't shoot my shot <laughs> as I should. The Bible says like go boldly before the throne, have faith, right? He gave us a courageous spirit, etc. But I used to think that God wants us to be timid and meek and for us to just let things come to us and then we don't have to do no work or anything like that but if you recall the story in the bible thank you lord what an inspiration but if you recall the story of the bible when they were looking for a wife for isaac right and abraham was looking for a wife for isaac and he had his servant go to go find rebecca and the servant went aggressively it was like lord this is the sign that i am asking whoever comes and is gentle and kind and gives me water but also gives my camels water and stuff like that that was with him this is who and Rebecca long story short went and she was the one right so he went back to Rebecca's household and told them hey this is what my master sent me to do to find someone from his own home to be a wife for Isaac and they had him spend the night and stuff but then he was like listen I must go <laughs> he was like I must go the next he was ready to go he was aggressive and they wanted him to wait a little bit still a little bit longer but he was like no please do not keep me I must go let's go Rebecca and they asked Rebecca did she want to go and she was like indeed I want to go and then they went he had what most people would say probably was an aggressive approach of not aggressive like he was gentle kind humble looking for kindness but he went he knew what his master sent him out to do and he went to do it to fulfill that and he was quick with it and boldly imagine if he just lingered and he listened to the master's house and tarried a little bit and wasn't pushy to go it could have been like a Jacob situation where Jacob stayed long enough for them to play him and then you know the whole situation with Leah I know I went deep in the Bible to give this story but it shows that when God puts something in your heart and wants you to get something where something is going to come for you like it's okay for you to aggressively pursue what god already has for you another example i would give is jacob when he was wrestling in the night with the angel of the lord okay and he did not let go unless the angel of the lord bless and who is the angel of the lord that is our savior jesus christ because who can bless okay he could bless and Anytime in the Old Testament, they said the angel of the Lord. There's only one angel, the angel of the Lord. But nonetheless, he wrestled with him. And then that was literally as aggressive as you can get as you're wrestling <laughs> with the angel of the Lord. And he got his blessing. Now, we're supposed to aggressively pursue our blessings. Okay aggressively pursue our blessings so that was a sign he held on and he would not let go until he get it and oftentimes we feel like anything that is truly meant for us is just supposed to come with ease and we're not supposed to put up any fight for it and it's just supposed to land on our laps like no sometimes you have to really hold on for your blessing like fight for it and do what you got to do get up and grind for it every day this is the concept of closed mouths do not get fed if you do not ask you will not receive if jacob didn't ask bless me i won't let you go until you bless me you know he asked for it he opened his mouth and asked for it and he got the blessing from the lord and not only that he aggressively pursued all night they fought and he got what he wanted right he worked for it but a lot of us feel like we're above working for the things that we want we're above you know asking and that somehow we're special we're so special that everything is just supposed to happen to us and that's why you're stuck and that's why you're not having a breakthrough and things are not happening for you at the speed that you would want it to happen for you and you have to learn to open up your mouth and fight for what you need and that is even in a biblical sense whether a relationship i'll give an advice this might be for somebody listening and whether in relationships right i'd say for man 
there's a lot of men that watch my channel. I see my analytics. I see. <laughs> Though I do mostly gear it towards women, there are a lot of men that watch too. And um, I see your comments also. But there's a lot that might be dealing with like shyness or you're not bold to pursue or shoot your shot with a woman that you find attractive that you like oh my goodness she's a perfect girl perfect dream girl and you don't shoot your shot you never know right you let timidity let you step back and the whole time the woman probably would have been more than willing to give you a chance if you just shot your shot <laughs> she's more than open you don't know what's the worst that can happen is no I don't realize scenarios where the woman would get married and then the guy would be like oh my goodness later you wait till she's married to tell her that you always wanted her and the whole time she's like you never made a move she could have been yours if you just opened your mouth and made a move so do not let timidity shyness stop you from shooting your shot shoot your shot and shoot it every time aggressively you want a wife but you're not shooting your shot right and with the career you want you want this certain career. You want this position. You've been working at this job for five plus years. You qualified. You have the certifications. You are a competent worker, but you're not asking for a raise. How are you going to count bread? How are you going to count bread? You, you're not going to count the bread if you don't ask. It, this goes also with laziness that we talk about. Lazy hands do not count bread. Lazy hands will not prosper. Okay. The one who stores up for this winter season is who prospers right animals know it when they're about to hibernate they store up they store up they store up but if you are lazy during the whole summer during the season of plenty when you go through the droughts or hibernation season you won't make it you won't make it you won't wake up you didn't do what you needed to do in the season where you should have been doing what you needed to do and this is how life is this is how life is if you want something you have to do what you got to do to get that something that you want right a lot of people want the wealth they want the lifestyle they want the luxury they want the peace of mind they want the flexibility but they're not willing to do the steps that it takes to do that the quality you know you want the business but you're cutting corners the quality sucks and sooner or later you might get a whole bunch of customers but then you realize you lose customers i'll give that with this restaurant this startup restaurant that started up and the food was delicious and the first couple orders that i got was phenomenal i went and made orders and everybody was just bragging about this restaurant it was so good they started getting business and they started to cut corners and you started tasting it in the food quality and okay the first meal that i got that was mm, not the same i was like, okay maybe it was an off day the second time i was like all right I didn't give them benefit of doubt. By the third time, I was like, yeah, that's it. They they done lost the sauce. And that was it for me. I stopped ordering from there. And once their business died all the way down, now they're like, oh, we're back with our old formula. We're this and that. We're not watering things out. It's like, it's too late. If you're going to do something, do it the right way every single time. Every single time. Every single time. Your quality has to speak for itself. Even if it takes you longer, take your time. Let the quality speak for itself. Because lazy hands will not count bread. When you cut corners, you will not be counting bread. You will lose business. You will lose in life. Even if it is in school and work, you want a promotion, you want a raise, but you're showing up late all the time. You're always calling off. When you're at work, you're on your phone. You're they're looking at you. They you know who's serious when they work. I mean, I used to be in corporate. I used to work regular jobs too. And I knew that I used to work at I used to work at Walgreens and I was in the beauty department like you know you unlock the beauty stuff and whatever and let me tell you I did not take that job seriously at all I did not it's like I'm not gonna be here forever but I know I'm not taking it serious um, as far as like this is going to be my career but I was you know I was in college just trying to make it and so I was like I'm gonna do the best that I can while I'm there and there was other people that was working in that department with me like well if we'll call shift or other people that I was working but when it came time for a raise and stuff like that even though I knew this wasn't going to be my forever job and there were people that was there working for years that I mean, at this point, it's your forever job. And I was called to get promotion over them, even if it was five cents more. It's five cents more that they could have gotten. And I learned the difference was I, even if you don't care about the job, you still don't cut corners, do what you have to do. And the bread will come. The bread will come. And with the people that were even there longer, you could tell 
They weren't doing like you could tell when you're at work. Like if I ask you right now to think about someone at your job that doesn't take the job serious, I'm sure there's a face that you have in mind. There's a face that pops up in mind. You know, the people by the water cooler, the people that come late, they're always calling off or they don't come dressed right in their uniforms or whatever. But then they always feel like there's an injustice happening to them when other people get raised. They get upset. They get annoyed. How dare you? Or they're not even trying to polish their skills and get more skills or whatever. But they're just so annoyed at people being getting promotions over them. But then you have to ask yourself, what are you doing as far as your part? What are you doing as far as your part to I don't want to say prove, but, you know, you know what I mean? Prove yourself. And so that laziness, it gets shown. And no matter what you do, like if you think of Joseph, Joseph in Potiphar's house was not lazy. He was diligent and he was put in charge of Potiphar's whole house to the point where it's like it was a blessing to Potiphar. All Potiphar had to worry about was what he ate. Then Joseph was called into prison. And guess what? Because he was in prison, did he give up? No. Did He's like, oh, I'm in despair. I might as well not work hard. When says, no, he was working so diligently even in prison, they put him in charge of everything in the prison to the point where the wardens worried about nothing. They just put Joseph in charge, they knew everything was set and they had nothing to care about. That's crazy. Even in prison, in a moment where you think, just give up, it's not worth it, whatever, the small things. And by the time he had Egypt, he was like second in command to Pharaoh. It was like he was already training for this. He was a diligent worker. He was not lazy and deserted everything that came to him. It comes with the story I gave before on this channel with my sister in the house where we was in the hood and the house was so trash. It was just terrible. We had like cement for our floors. Like it was concrete cement. That was our floors like the sidewalk you walk out on. The house was just broken. It was in deplorable positions. But yet, she would harass me to clean and everyone would be cleaning. I'd be annoyed, like, what's the point of cleaning? That used to be me. That used to be my attitude. What's the point? This house is busted anyways. Like, you know, I'm why I'm mopping and sweeping concrete. It just it made no sense to me. But my sister was literally, she told me, um, how do you expect for God to give us a bigger, better home if you can't even take care of this little home that you have? And she told me that and it stayed with me. And like I said, she was young, 16. And that stayed with me. Then I started to help her clean. And eventually I saw it. We just kept moving, moving up until I could say, okay, Everyone in my family that came and had to go through the poverty and all of that ended up buying their own homes. They all have their own homes. But that mentality that my sister put in me is also biblical that if you're faithful with the little things, you will be blessed with the bigger things Like God will increase and multiply for you. And it's the same thing with the talents, the parable of the talents with the master that gave basically the talents, you'd say money. It's kind of like an investment. You have two people work, three people working for you, and you give them all, you give them money. And one of them hid the money and wanted to save it, did nothing with it, while the other one multiplied that money, tripled it, and now doubled it and had more than what was given. And then one of them spent it and it was all gone. So when the master came back, he took the money of the one who hid the money and gave it and added it to the one who multiplied it. And that's who he showed favor for. And the one who squandered it, like, be away from me. It's the same thing. Like, whenever, whatever is given to you, find a way to multiply and increase that. Be faithful in the little things. So what? You're in a shabby little apartment. It's not your dream apartment right now. It sucks. Maybe you don't even have hot water. You know how many stories like I do on celebrities on my biography channel or people through history, even Evita, like she was the first lady of Argentina. Her story is so inspirational to me. You'll be in a house with no hot water, no food, whatever, but they did the best that they could with what they had. And these people became huge deals. You in an apartment, you don't like your apartment. You feel cramped up. You don't have no storage. It's just this and that. Clean it anyways. Take care of it anyways. Be grateful for it anyways. And it will multiply. You in school, that's all you have right now. You don't have much else going on for you, but school, then be the best at school that you're going to be. That quote, we hear it all the time and it sounds so cliche. Whatever you're doing, be the best at what you're doing. There's only one you. So be the best you that you can be. 
Are you your best? Are you at your prime? And what I mean by that, are you at the weight that you want to be in? Physically, is there something that you can do to help you physically? Like skin wise, maybe, hey, I will never be like a, I don't know, the prettiest girl in the world. I'll never be like a Kim Kardashian or something. Uh, Iman, you know, I think Iman is so gorgeous, a supermodel. Ah, she is so beautiful. But I would, you probably say that I would never have this kind of aesthetic or beauty or whatever. But I can be the best Kareen, be the best me that I can be. Do I have acne right now? Let me go work on my acne. Let me go work on my skin. My weight? Yeah, let me stay consistent with this weight loss journey because I'm not at the ideal weight that I want to be. Do my hair or makeup and what's going to let me look the best? And let me polish my mental skills. I might not be the prettiest, but let me learn how to be a magnetic person that knows how to have great conversations, speak multiple languages. There's things you can do to be the best version of you because there's only one you and it sounds cliche but really believe it like look to me in my eyeballs really believe this there's only one you insert your name here there's only one Kareem say that to yourself if your name is Sarah if your name is Anne whatever say there's only one Anne there's only one Sarah there's only one me one you that the Lord made uniquely and be the best you that you can be. We don't know how much longer we have on earth. We're limited, right? And so don't spend those limited years that you have being lazy, not multiplying what is given to you, not working with it, not opening your mouth and asking so that you could receive, living in fear, not aggressively pursuing the blessings that you have. You're limited with your time. Do the best that you can now until he comes again, that he can come and find you and be like, well done, good and faithful servant. Like you've lived up to your full potential. I do strongly believe not living up to your full potential is a sin. Not doing the best you can in life is a sin. Not waking up every day being the best you that you could be mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally is a sin. And I know if I'm not asking to be burnt out and put a whole bunch of things on you, but try to organize your life. Be grateful for what you have. If you're only making $30,000, you know, there's people. What's crazy is I know this lady that worked as a, um, as a um, housekeeper at Disney for years at my church. She was just a housekeeper at Disney. She was getting paid minimum wage when she first started, but they kept giving raise, raise. And then she got to the point at the time, minimum wage at the time when I knew her was like $6.25 or $7. It wasn't much, but she was making like $12. And with that income, her husband was doing like uh, had a food truck or something. They were modest living, but with that income, they were able to buy this huge house. And everybody's like, how are you guys affording this place? How did you guys buy this with such a large down payment? But they were so good with the money that they were making. They were so diligent. They saved. They were organized with their stuff. Like, it's such an inspiration. And I know a lot of Haitians that work on the bare minimum, like make minimum wage, and they build big houses back home that they go retire to, like men they made their money work for them in America. Yes, I'm only making um, $7 an hour or $10, whatever minimum wage is for you. But I'm not buying stupid stuff, having a haul and buying stuff I don't need every month. Like with the limited amount I'm making, I'm paying my tithes and offerings. I'm making sure I provide sustenance for myself and pay my bills. But anything extra I have goes into a saving and we work, we budget, we downsize, we limit, we do what we have to do to get where we need to go. But if you can't manage the little amount of money you have now, how do you think God's going to give you the millions you're requesting? You're making 30000 and you cannot manage that a year, 40000 whatever. Whatever. But you're asking to manage a hundred thousand six figures. How do you think that's going to happen? If God can see that you're faithful with what you have now, it will uh, multiply for you. And I know some people use the concept of the whole universe thing, and y'all know how I feel about that. Meaning that it rains on the just and unjust. Even if you don't acknowledge God, God is so fair that even those who don't acknowledge Him don't believe in Him. You could be a whole atheist, but you're managing your money well and you're making the right investments, you will still get blessings, which is why a lot of Christians don't understand why does the poor get, this is what the Bible verse means when it says, why does evil seems to always have blessings? Evil 
sometimes are more competent than the righteous. The righteous feel like their righteousness alone should get them everything they want in life. And they feel like, but I've been good. I'm good to people. I'm not a thief. I'm not this. I deserve all of this. And it's like, that's not enough. You know, you're all of this. Yeah, you're not lying. You're not an adulterer or whatever, but you're lazy. You're lazy. <laughs> and laziness in itself is a sin. Whereas you have someone that is evil, but they grind. They wake up every day. They grind. They do what they have to do. So the rain falls on the just and the unjust. That's what it means. If you study in every day, even no matter how toxic of a person you could be, you'll pass that test because you're studying every day. And the person who's the sweetest person don't study at all. You think they're going to pass just because they're sweet? No, it doesn't work that way. That's not how it works. We reap what we sow. And if you sow good, you will reap good. If you sow good habits with your finances, you will reap good. If you sow good habits with your education, your health, you will reap what you sow, the good of what you sow. And remember, there's only one you. And because there's only one you, you have to sow into yourself. You have to sow and do good deeds for yourself so that you may reap those good deeds. And might you might not see it today once you sleep early, but over time you keep sleeping early, you're going to see the difference. You're going to see the difference when you eat differently and you're a little bit more focused, you're organized, you're not distracted, you get work done. Like right now, I recorded several videos for you guys. It's what, 1023? And I've been recording and doing makeup and all that stuff since like what, 12 p.m. today? <laughs> it's 1023 p.m. 12, yeah. So since this afternoon, early this afternoon to now and but in the end, this is me living to my full potential. If God put something in my heart to speak to you guys about it or work or purpose for me to do. And I could have spent the whole day because today I really wanted to just uh, I wanted to just chill and watch Netflix all day. But I'm like, that's not being the best cream. That's not living in my purpose. That's not doing what God puts in my heart to do and reach the people that he wants me to reach. So at the end of the day, I need to get up and go do it, no matter how much I didn't want to do it. I don't want to record that one extra video. But I had in my mind, you're recording six videos today. So do it. <laughs> you know, by the fourth video, you're like, I could get away. Nope. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it tired. Do it you know, broken, whatever, just do it. Be the best you. You will always reap. You will always have a reward for being diligent. But this was a message that was on my heart and I don't know who it was for, but always refer to the title. Save this video if you ever need motivation and you feel like the spirit of laziness is coming upon you. Like, understand, you gotta rebuke that spirit. And I talked about also um, spiritual attacks. I, I think I'll pin that in the comments for you guys. Spiritual attacks can be because it's not always demonic you know like you know i talk about how laziness that can be a spiritual attack and stuff like that that is the reason why you're being stuck and you're being held back also and i also talk about why are you even being stuck and i just want you guys to end this year strong we're like halfway through the year we have a couple more months left end it strong and do what you what you can with the little bit that you have be diligent. Don't hate on others. Don't be mad when you know you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Like, do what you're supposed to be doing and things will come to you, right? Right? But this is all I have to say to you guys. I love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in. Leave a white heart in the comments if you watch until the end. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.